The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. We are back. Trending Topics News Radio with Tom Simon and Fred Wallen. I'm Ralph Tycho with the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, and I have the privilege of introducing these two guys. Let's start with Tom. How are you, sir? Ralph, thank you very much. I'm doing great. I'm in Williston, North Dakota today, oil country, where uh, much of what uh, Donald Trump promised he would do is happening. You know, uh, jobs are just crazy over here. They have as many as 6,000 jobs they cannot fill right now uh, in the, this uh, area here called the Balkan. So uh, uh, it's easy to see uh, what uh, his promises have met meant in this area. And we've got lots to talk about today, Ralph, and we appreciate you having us aboard. Okay. Fred Wallen, you two enjoy each other and uh, keep contributing. You are wonderful and additive. Uh, both of you are to the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. Have a great show, guys. Fred, we've got lots to talk about today. Fred Wallen is in Westlake Village, California. I'm Tom Simon in Williston, North Dakota. One of the stories is California-based, Fred. It's about that Golden State killer, and we're going to talk a little bit about the, how uh, the science has helped them catch the Golden State killer, and they added a charge today. But first of all, I wanted to talk about this Florida story, big story, Fred, in Florida today. The uh, uh, state's attorney in Florida decided to go ahead and charge uh, the man with, uh, uh, with manslaughter, uh, after the sheriff decided last month, last week uh, to not uh, charge the man with manslaughter. Have you seen the tape yet, Fred? I have not seen the tape, but uh, read about the whole thing and it happened a couple weeks ago in the parking lot. And uh, it has a lot to do with uh, to stand your, your ground law in the state of Florida and other states now. And uh, I think that's a major blemish on this country. Marcus McLaughlin is the guy's name who was shot and killed. Uh, he is a black uh, fella, and uh, the white guy that shot him is Michael Dreska. Uh, Dreska is 47 years old. When you watch the tape, Fred, I have a hard time not imagining if I had a gun that I would not have shot him as well. Um, the tape shows, uh, which was released by police and has been run all over the Internet, uh, this time, uh, Marcus coming in to uh, the shopping center and parking with his wife in a handicapped spot. And his wife goes into the store, uh, and he's and she's approached when she comes out uh, by Michael Dreska. And Dreska is uh, arguing with her about parking in the handicapped spot without a sticker. Uh, his, her husband comes up to Michael Dreska, and with both hands, shoves him extremely hard to the ground. And on the ground, as he sits on his rear end, he pulls his legal gun out and shoots and kills uh, Marcus McLaughlin and is later today charged with manslaughter. You say what about all that? Well, Marcus didn't have a gun. Uh, if he didn't have the... Uh stand your ground law in Florida, nobody would think about uh, shooting somebody. They think they can get away with it with impunity, and as I found out uh, over the last few months, um, sheriffs and sometimes prosecutors are very frightened in Florida and other states that have that stand your ground because they can be sued uh, if they prosecute somebody and the guy's acquitted. So there is, it's a very delicate situation indeed, but again, Tom, I had a few, very few fights as a kid, but if I was on the ground, I'm going to get up. I'm not going to go to my pocket and pull a gun out unless you feel like you have that right in the state of Florida. And that's why the more guns you have, the more murders you have, and the more deaths you have. And one more time, the guy standing over him didn't have a gun. If he had pulled a gun and you had a gun, then obviously you've got to save your life. There was no question that he didn't have a gun. They haven't found a gun. No one ever said he had a gun. And secondly, why did the guy butt in in the first place? It was sort of like the Zimmerman case, Trayvon Martin, 
where a guy's bothering somebody for no reason at all. You don't like the fact that by accident or on purpose they took a handicap zone, call the police. Police don't get there in time. Get the license plate. End the story. You don't. He started the problem, and he killed a man, and they're going to call it manslaughter. I'd call it second-degree murder if I were in the state of Florida. But the problem, Tom, is for a black person, most of the juries are white, and we know from the Trayvon Martin case, it's very tough to convict, uh, uh, convict a white guy versus a black guy, so probably you'll get acquitted, and uh, the wife doesn't have a husband, and if they had kids, they don't have a father, and all we did, the worst thing he did was park in a handicap zone. I, I got to tell you that I don't think that once the jury sees that tape, Fred, there's a chance in hell of them finding him guilty. I'm Tom Simon in Williston, North Dakota, coming to you on the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. Fred Wallen is in Westlake Village, California, trending topics news radio live. We're glad you're with us. Thank you for being with us, and uh, thank you to Ralph for giving us the opportunity uh, to bring this show to you each week right here on the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. We're talking about this Florida Stand Your Ground law right now. And, folks, if you saw this tape, don't listen to Fred Wallen on this one because, Fred, I know your health is not good, and you would not be able, uh, with your current health, to be able to pop up off the ground and defend yourself. You would not be able to do that. Now, I want you to throw into the equation that your wife Sandy is there, and now you are on the ground looking up at this guy who has just pushed you to the ground uh, with no physical provocation from you whatsoever. And now your wife is standing there as well, and you're thinking about her and you have a gun. I'm here to tell you, Fred, I believe that you would t- pull that gun and you would use that to protect yourself because you can't get up and you wouldn't be able to get up for, uh, 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 considering your current health, and your wife would be in danger, and you're not going to let Sandy be in danger. That's what I say. But it's reversed because the uh, the white guy provoked the whole thing by talking to the, 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 the black guy's wife. That provoked the whole thing. So, you know, it's, it's easy to say, after you're on the ground, that I didn't do anything, but he did do something. He provoked the whole thing by intervening, by butting in, by interrupting, by, you know, uh, again, as we were doing the other show a couple hours ago, and we got cut off technically, uh, let me say this. My wife, Sandy, is a big dog lover, operations blankets of love. She'll do anything for dogs or cats. If she sees uh, 100 degree temperature, 90 degree temperature, and she sees an idiot man or woman lock her dog in the car as they go shopping. She'll get the license plate. She'll call the police at that moment. She'll stand, she'll stand there until the uh, police come. And if they don't come, she got the license plate. And my, my, my point is uh, we got a major problem, you know, with guns. I mean, uh, you all the guy did, the worst thing he did was parked in a handicap zone. Because of that, he's dead. And because the, uh, of the stand your ground law and they allow the guns, a human being is dead because he made a mistake or on purpose and parked in a handicap zone. Fine. Fine him. $50, $100, whatever it is, $500, whatever it is for parking in a handicap zone. Get his license plate. Don't butt in into a situation that you have nothing to do with. And there are other parking places. And, uh, again, you just wonder, if the guy doesn't have a gun originally, does he intervene? Or does it give you that big macho or machismo-type attitude, I've got a gun in a stand your ground law, so I can't be uh, defeated here. I, I've got the gun, and I've got the strength. And, uh, you know, percentage-wise, that's why we have more deaths. To be uh, fair uh, to the argument itself, uh, we should note that uh, published reports are that uh, the uh, fellow who shot and killed Marquise, Michael Dreska, is accused also of pulling his gun at least two other occasions uh, in a uh, in road rage situations. The gun was not fired in those two other occasions by the 47-year-old. In this case, on July 19th, uh, the gun was fired. 28-year-old Marquise McLaughlin shot and killed 
uh, and now uh, Michael Dreska is going to have to go to trial because the prosecutor in this case decided to uh, go against what the sheriff concluded. The sheriff concluded that there should not be a charge based on the um, stand your ground law. I'm here to tell you, Fred, I believe that in many uh, counties across this country who do not have a stand your ground law, that there still wouldn't have been a charge uh, by uh, by police in this case. I talked to the mayor of Williston, North Dakota today, Mayor Klug, uh, about this. There is no stand your ground law here in North Dakota. Uh, he says there's no stand your ground law, but we don't need one here. Uh, believe me, we would protect ourselves, and we have we have enough guns here to do that with. So even though North Dakota does not have a stand your ground law, Fred, the mayor of, of Williston, North Dakota, believes that that shooting may have happened here uh, because uh, people uh, support uh, being able to defend yourself. Common sense, common sense to me indicates that if I have a gun, I'm more likely to get involved in things I have no business getting involved in. Uh, like you said, that the guy who ended up uh, being the shooter in this case has been accused twice of uh, not shooting but uh, pulling his gun uh, uh, in a road rage situation. That's very dangerous. Too many guns mean too many deaths. And, again, you know, the Second Amendment this, the Second Amendment that. The bottom line is uh, I think it leads to uh, what happened here in the state of Florida. It's what happened uh, to Trayvon Martin in, in uh, 2012. Fewer guns, fewer deaths. But we uh, kill more than a thousand times uh, many other Western nations in this country by the use of guns, and there's got to be a reason. And the reason is, I think, we think uh, we're indomitable. And when you have a gun in your hand, multiply that by two or three, and now you're more than indomitable. And uh, this guy, uh, uh, again, I would have him second-degree murder. I'm not a lawyer. They've got a manslaughter. I don't think he'll be convicted. Uh, because uh, it's probably a white jury. But the point is, at least the prosecutor, I believe, is doing the correct thing. Still to come on uh, Trending Topics News Radio Live, Alma Rosa and Rosie O'Donnell will talk about both of those coming up. Good to have you with us. I'm Tom Simon in Williston, North Dakota. Fred Wallen is in Westlake Village, California, on the comfortably zoned radio network. And Fred... Uh, out of California comes this story about the Golden State Killer uh, being arrested, uh, of course, a while back. And now today, a 13th murder charge has been filed against him. Uh, and it all mm-hmm. really stems back, Fred, uh, from uh, the, the way that technology has, is used nowadays to fight crime. I'm very impressed with the way that the... the, the uh, uh, law enforcement has used technology in this case to revive the investigation. This ex-cop left a trail of murders and rapes and home burglaries throughout five different counties in California, Fred. One of them, the county that you live in, Ventura County, throughout the 1970s and the 80s. The last known crime was in 1986. In the early 2000s in Ventura County, Ventura County Police were able to obtain the killer's DNA in a 1980 double murder of Lyman and Chelsea Smith, uh, who uh, were bludgeoned to death in Ventura County uh, in the 1970s. Uh, so they were able to put together, uh, using technology, DNA, uh, saliva from a tissue that was retrieved from the trash can, a bullet that was used in a subsequent crime, uh, all this to bring together the uh, trial now of uh, this guy for 13 different murders in the 70s and 80s. An ex-cop, Fred. Well, l- l- let me just take this. Um, not only does DNA and the modern technology find the real killers, it gets people that have been convicted, unfortunately, for murders they didn't commit or crimes they didn't commit can get them off. So, and, and of course, the Northwestern Institute uh, uh, has found, I don't know how many people on death row and how many people they've saved by the use of DNA and other modern technologies. So, 
that's totally a positive. There's no question about it. And uh, thankfully, they found the right guy, most likely this time. And, uh, you know, again, if somebody else had been convicted, uh, he'd soon be out. And there have been cases, Tom, as you know, of people being jailed 20, 30 years uh, for crimes they didn't convict. Yeah, with the modern technology, maybe that won't happen as often. You know, one of the things I was impressed with was in this 1985 uh, uh, murder, uh, this murder in uh, Visalia, California, 1980 murder, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, again, of the wrong date, 1975, get it right, the third time. This Visalia murder, uh, a professor swelling was shot and killed for protecting his 16-year-old daughter from being kidnapped. They were able to tie the gun uh, into this murder back to this ex-cop because they were able to trace this gun to one of the prior 12 murders, uh, and the the ex-cop apparently, according to police, stole that gun from one of his murder victims and then used it to uh, kill this professor in 1975 at his home as he tried this ex-cop to uh, kidnap the 16-year-old daughter of this professor. So look at look at all the technology involved. They were able to get his DNA by observing him. Uh, first of all, they were able to track, uh, narrow it down to this uh, cop by doing what's called a family tree analysis of the DNA. And... Uh, when they did the family tree analysis of the DNA, uh, they were able to narrow it down to certain people. One of them was the cop. So they put the cop under surveillance. They did not have his DNA available. So they watch him under surveillance, and he he throws a tissue away in the trash. They retrieve the tissue, get his DNA, and that matches him to one of the earlier crimes. Amazing. Then they're able to track this gun that he used in the 1975 killing to a a burglary that he had uh, in Visalia, California, and they're able to track, uh, connect that uh, to the the gun to the 1975 killing in Visalia, and now today they charge him. This stuff just amazes me. It is, uh, it takes Sherlock Holmes uh, beyond what even he could, they, they could imagine in the Sherlock Holmes series to a new level, Fred. And that's why in cases like, uh, murder, and in some cases kidnapping, and uh, in some cases rape, there is no statute of limitations for exactly that reason, because as modern technology moves forward, there's going to be more and more correct analysis of who did it, so I think that's, uh, uh, you know, a positive, and uh, I'm sure we'll see what happens if this trial moves forward, but without the modern technology, there would be no trial. Trending Topics News Radio live on the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. Good to have you with us. Thank you for joining us each week right here on the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. President Wallen is in Westlake Village, California. I'm Tom Simon coming to you from Williston, North Dakota today. And, Fred, the Trump uh, signing of the new uh, multi-billion dollar defense bill, nicknamed the John McCain defense bill, goes off without a hitch today also goes off without a mention of John McCain at all. He's slighted, snubbed by Trump. You say what? Well, you know my feelings about Donald Trump. There isn't a lower low life on earth than Donald Trump. So, uh, he, again, who started this? Not John McCain. In 215, Trump says that uh that McCain's not a hero. He likes his heroes who aren't captured. McCain didn't start this. Trump started this. And it's gone on to where now Trump doesn't have the class to mention the fact. And, he, and, and of course, um, McCain was the head of that committee, and uh, so that's why it was titled the McCain Bill. And his name was never mentioned. I watched the entire speech and uh, just proves how classless the guy in D.C. happens to be. Here's another guy who uh, didn't have bone spurs, spent five years in uh, detention and, uh, and being brutalized in North Vietnam. And he could have been free, but uh, because of his uh, parents and his dad and his grandfather, 
had been involved and the North Koreans were willing to uh, free him and, they, and this is not a wives tale, it's a reality. He said no until my guys are also released, so he waited five years to get released. I don't agree with him politically on a lot of issues, uh, but if it's, rever if it's reversed or if it's any other human being, John McCain's name is mentioned and only a lowlife like Trump would not mention John McCain's name. Folks, the National Defense Authorization Act is what it's called, most significant investment in military history, $716 billion, and uh, nicknamed the John McCain Defense Bill. Uh, it boosts military pay by 2.6%. That's the largest hike in nine years. So it does a lot of good things. Uh, but, Fred, you've got to understand that Republicans are not happy, especially hardcore Republicans, not happy with John McCain uh, because he stopped the total recall of the Obamacare with his thumbs-down vote. He did it in a very theatrical manner. Uh, he's not an innocent. John McCain is not an innocent. He has cancer. I feel bad about that. But having cancer, Fred, does not excuse being boorish. And John McCain is nothing if he's not that. No, I, I totally disagree. The day before... Uh, along with Lindsey Graham, they held a press conference saying, and McCain said, I cannot vote for this bill unless the Democrats uh, become part of the negotiation, and they weren't parts of the negotiation. I wasn't surprised at all. I stayed up that night till 12 or 1 a.m. Pacific time to see how he'd vote. He put his thumb down. Congratulations for that. And, uh, you know, eh, McCain's been a Republican all his life. Um, most of 98% uh, 98, 98 of uh, uh, low life's life, he's been a Democrat. So <laughs> uh, the, the phoniness of this man is beyond belief. And, um, you know, you just, there, there's no getting around the fact that the guy we have in, see, the guy in D.C. is supposed to be a moral leader. Kids are supposed to look up to him and uh, people are supposed to look up to him. Nobody looks up to him because everybody knows he lies, every other word he says is a lie, but to put down a man who has cancer, and again, one more time, it wasn't McCain who went after Trump, it was Trump for no reason at all. During a, a, a TV network appearance, when they asked him, what do you think of John McCain, he says, a hero, well, I consider heroes not captured. Yet, what reason would he have to do that? At that point, he, had, he wasn't president, at that point, he hadn't voted against the health care bill. McCain hadn't voted against his health care bill. At that point, all McCain had done is voted the way his heart says on most cases. Eighty percent of the time, I disagreed with him. Fred disagreed with him. But my point is, uh, 20 percent, he, he voted the other way. But at least you got to give the man a credit because he's got a mind and he, and he thinks, unlike the other guy. And it's Trump who started it. It's not McCain. So you go back three years, and Trump started this going this back and forward. In the meanwhile, McCain gets brain cancer, and he still goes after. No, very few people on earth, you know, w would do something like this. And you, in the history of the earth would do something like this. And I want kids who look up to the president. I want kids who look up to think that I want to grow up to be president. Kids aren't doing that. They, you know, they, they, kids aren't stupid. They know what's going on. And this thing about McCain, to me, honestly, Tom, is the lowest form of humanity. Well, obviously, we disagree, Fred, on that. In fact, uh, I would want my kids to understand that you don't punch first, but you become a great counterpuncher, and that's what their president right now Who is, is a great counterpuncher. Who started it? Who said the first thing? Did McCain go after Trump in 2015? So, or did, or did uh, Trump go after McCain in 2015 on national TV? Who started this? McCain, McCain said something with words. Uh, 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 with, with, with more than words. Uh, Trump said just words that uh, upset McCain. Okay, he, he uh, uh, said some bad things about his military service. But what McCain did was take down the entire agenda on health care for the that Republicans. That was he after. That. And he said, but he said why? Because they didn't get the Democrats involved in the negotiation. And no, I that's BS. Thing. That's exactly that's what he BS. said. What? what? No, it wasn't. They had a press conference. I mean, that's not BS. That's what they said. Lindsey Graham. Yeah, and, that's, what and, it, that, 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 that's what he said. But the point is, 
that that's BS. The Democrats did the that's same BS. thing when they had the House. When they had the Democrats had the House and Senate, they did the same exact thing. Oh, Fred. No, they didn't. Uh, no, they didn't. And you got to look up history. Nothing like this. They locked the Democrats out. It was all Republican decisions. The Democrats never got a look at this health care bill. And that's exactly what McCain and Graham said. So why would you be surprised a few nights later, since there were no changes, uh, they didn't change in the next three days, getting Democrats in So Why would you totally be shocked? I told Sandy, we were up watching. I said, it's 50-50. I don't know how he's going to go, but I think there's a chance he's going to vote down the darn thing, and I'm going to be very happy if he does. And he did. And I don't care if I was for the bill. I would hope he would go. To, uh, he would vote that way because he had a he had principle. The principle was you got to have both sides involved. That's what this, that's what this country is made of. And since the Republicans have taken over, you know, like the gerrymandering in the individual states and the whole thing, they want to make it impossible for the Democrats to take over. We'll see what happens in 85 days in November, but the, the hunch is that. Uh, if the Democrats take the House, uh, there's going to be an, an impeachment process. He's not probably going to get convicted because I don't think they can take over the Senate, but uh, that will be enough to uh, scare Trump uh, out of his clothes. Trending Topics News Radio Live on the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. I'm Tom Simon. He's Fred Wallen. Good to have you with us. Thank you for joining us weekly right here on the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. As we speak in Arizona, lots of you – uh, listen and watch us in Arizona on our Facebook Live program. Uh, they are experiencing, Fred, sinkholes in some of their major streets, big sinkholes. There are live pictures being shot out all over the country right now of uh, Elliott Road in Mesa, Arizona, uh, where uh, Elliott Road, a main thoroughfare there in Mesa, one of the major towns in the Phoenix, Arizona area, uh, being closed down because these sinkholes are just appearing. Uh, after the rain that has been uh, uh, been had in, uh, and the and the dust storms and so on in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, but the question becomes very quickly before we move on to our other topics, uh, Fred, is it uh, is is it a weather this weather phenomenon that we're seeing where it's 100 degrees today in Williston, North Dakota, uh, it, it is 110, 118 degrees. Uh, uh, and, and then showers and rain in Phoenix, Arizona, over 100 degrees in California. Uh, so are things really changing on Earth? Well, of course. Climate change, of course. We had the hottest July in history in California. The fires, the biggest fire in history of the state of California. Of course it's climate change. People don't want to say yes to that because uh, they're getting paid off and uh, they want to continue deregulating everything so that uh, they continue to get money on the side. And, and we know that, and common sense will dictate that. And uh, the more deregulations we have, uh, the worse and worse it will get, uh, certainly with gas and cars and things like that. We're going to be breathing more smog here in Southern California than we had in 40 years because of people like Donald Trump and people who are making money on the side, pilfering money from uh, – you and I, and even worse than pilfering money, taking years from from human lives away because they're so uh, intent on, on getting greedy, uh, on being greedier and greedier and richer and richer. So it all doesn't matter, and as long as they're in control, it's going to continue in that direction, and that's why we have to stop them in November. And, um, and you know, it, it, this whole thing is it's so upside down that it's beyond belief. When Trump took over, he said. He only hires the best people. Tom, how many people have pleaded guilty to various crimes? How many people have been kicked out of the administration eventually because of things that they might be charged with in the near future? I mean, the record. Well, one of them is one of them is Elmarosa. Elmarosa was uh, kicked out, and she is now talking today about. And she is she is talking today about a tape recording that she made. In the Situation Room, after she was fired, my question is, what's she still doing in the Situation Room? And how is it right that you tape record the President of the United States uh, in the Situation Room uh, when you're well, just an aide? The, 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 the way I read the story and heard the tape, she was in the Situation Room with uh, John Kelly, the guy who fired her. She was on the phone 
with Donald Trump when she taped him from home. But I could be wrong, but that's the way I heard it. She was not in, she was, she was already she had already been kicked out of the White House when she made the phone call to Donald Trump. So she wasn't in the situation when she was talking to Trump. She was in the situation because in the Situation Room because that's where Kelly wanted her to be. Washington D.C., like the state of New York and many other states, is a, a one-choice uh, state. If one party knows that it's being taped, that's okay. So whatever she did, uh, certainly legal. And uh, again, if you're dealing with Donald Trump, you better legal, but is it ethical? Legal, but is it ethical or is it moral? I, yeah, I would suggest to you that it is not. Okay, well then we disagree. But because because Donald Trump is such a liar, you have to tape every word he says because he will try uh, to get out of the lie. So you have to have everything. And I, I, I'm only praying, uh, you know, I, and I'm the least religious human being on earth. In this case, I don't want to believe there were, were, was a special person up there or a special somebody up there if uh, the N-word was on tape that she says she heard. Somebody comes up with that. Um, I, I, I would believe maybe that there is something bigger than us here on earth and we just didn't show up here. But uh, until that time, I don't know. But I'm dying to hear. She said, well, she taped all the stuff, and she says, and folks, if you missed it, she says she heard the N-word on somebody else's tape of Donald Trump. So she, A, is not the only person allegedly taping things. Apparently everybody was taping things. And i got to tell you something, Tom. That's on Trump. Because think about this now. What if John Kelly and Mattis and Trump were in there talking about North Korea and there was a tape recorder going on. They're not even smart enough or sharp enough to care about that. He's more worried about getting back at John McCain or he's more worried about calling uh, Maxine Waters a, a low IQ and things like that than checking for our protection in, in this nation, our protect. So if there's any question what Donald Trump cares about, it's only Donald Trump. And a spokesman for you guys is Rosie O'Donnell. And she says on uh, Cuomo last over the weekend uh, that uh, she's uh, leading the Broadway stars in the Trump protest. She says that the outcome of the 2016 election was rigged by the Russians. Not only that they tried to rig it, but she says that it was rigged by the Russians. She's full of baloney, Rose, uh, Rosie O'Donnell is. And the, nothing more that Republicans would love to have is that her on the forefront of the fight against Donald Trump in the elections. But the intel, our intel department said the Russians fixed the election. She's just saying what they said. You don't know no, they said they, attempt, they said they said they attempted to. The intel no, never said that, that the result. No, they have never said that the result is the, that they, well, we that they were that. successful. They said they, they said they did make an effect. Take, they did. They made, no, they said they made a chart. They made an attempt. They did not and, say they made an effect. And, and my point is, in the one it was in Michigan and one of the states, there was only 11,000 vote differential. So that's not hard to figure that if, uh, if they uh, did the uh, – the Russians aren't stupid. I mean, so uh, they could certainly change uh, 11,000 votes. That's not impossible to believe. So I don't care about Rosie O'Donnell one way or the other, but the point is this guy is supposed to be a moral leader, a leader with character. He's got no character, and – uh, if you open this uh, segment, I'm going to repeat again. Folks, look into your heart and tell me. Even if somebody, you started the argument three years ago with somebody else, in this case John McCain, by saying, I don't like, I don't I don't think heroes are people that get to cast. You started the argument, and then he comes back at you. Now he's got brain cancer. How many out of you, out of you, listening thousands right here on the Comfortably Zone Radio Network uh, on Trending Topics News uh, Radio would have done what Donald Trump did uh, uh, this Monday today by not mentioning John McCain's name one time on a bill when he was head of the committee. Only Donald Trump. Nobody else is that low. And nobody else I've ever known. I mean, and listen, I, I grew up with Richard Nixon. You grew up with Richard Nixon. But even Nixon knew when it was time to leave. This guy will never know when it's time to leave. And, folks, here's my point. If I were you, I would uh, start uh, building myself a shelter. Because this guy is going to start a war rather than Mueller pushing him out. And Mueller's going to have enough evidence uh, to impeach and convict at some point. 
or certainly criminal charges uh, on a state level in New York. So get, if you have the money, build a shelter because we're going to have atomic bombs blowing up because of this man. I don't believe, uh, unless you guys get an agenda that is something other than impeach Donald Trump, that you're going to be able to get uh, the House. Uh, and certainly I don't believe in any circumstance you're going to be able to get the Senate. But we'll find out soon enough, Fred. What happens we'll find out soon before, before we leave, Tom, what happens if the tape comes out with him using the N-word? In your mind, would that make any difference? No. Okay, I agree with you. See, that's the scary thing. That, that's the scary thing. I don't think it would matter if Amarosa could get that tape that she says she heard of Donald Trump using the N-word. I don't think it would matter to his base. That tells you how sick this society is in 2018. Folks, we appreciate you joining us on Trending Topics News Radio Live, the comfortably zoned radio network. We'll see you next week. I'm Tom Simon. He's Fred Wallen in Westlake Village, California.